Hey everybody, welcome back to Office Hours with the Professor, the show where I say things. Today, we're going to learn how to introduce ourselves in text. Okay, so by the end of this video, we should be able to ask and answer what is your name, what is his name, what is her name, okay, in cat, and introduce ourselves. Additionally, we will be able to ask and answer what is this and what is that for a few simple neuter nouns. So not masculine, not feminine, just neuter, okay? So I'd like to start by imagining that we've been taken back in time to before the 20th century, when Ket was used as a primary means of communication along the middle Yenisei River and its tributaries, okay? And as you reflect on the coolness of the Ket language and culture, maybe you're floating down the river in a small boat made of birch bark. Now the Yenisei River, its springtime, has just begun to flow after its winter freeze, and there are still pieces of ice floating in the water, okay? And the weather is sunny but cold, and there's still snow on the ground. And as we travel along the river, all right, we meet a friendly man on the shore, and he seems to be setting up some sort of structure on the riverside, okay? And he calls out to you and Ket, let's look. Booyo, he says, or Kazaha. We can reply to him with Buiyo Ukibila Ap i Dahani Ukibila Ap i Tureakus Kireakus Tureu Kaap E. Okay, so here's our friend, here's us. Friend, us. Friend, us, right? Let's go over the conversation one more time. Buiyo or Kilaha Buiyo Ukibila Ab i Dahaning Ukibila Ab i Tureakus Kireakus Tureuka Eh. So what did we just say? Let's find out. Let's move over to our grammar section and learn our first grammar point, okay? We're learning right now something called the vocative postposition. Now, in English, we have prepositions, right? For example, to, for, about, stuff like that. Well, and we call them prepositions pre, right? Because they come before the noun. Now, in cat, we have postpositions. That is, they come after the noun, okay? So, here is our cat vocative postposition. What do you think vocative means? Vocative means calling out to someone. You know, maybe you, you, you've heard of uh, someone's vocation is their true job, their calling in life, right? So, a vocative means calling out. Maybe we can also remember uh, vocal or vocabulary, right? So, vocative postposition. If I'm calling out to a man trying to get his attention, I would follow his name with O. Oh, okay? So, for example, if my friend's name, as here, is Dahani, we can call out to him by saying Dahani Ngo. The honey go right? On the other hand, if our friend is a woman, we need to use a different host position. We don't want to use O. Oh. Instead, for women, we say ah, but not always. We only say ah if we're calling out to a woman or a girl who we can see. So maybe if I'm talking on the phone to my mom, 
I would not say ah because I can't see her. Instead, I would say eh. Okay? So remember, vocative postposition in cat. O for male and ah or eh uh, for female depending on whether she's visible. Now, cat has no direct translation to the word hello. However, we can make friendly greetings to people that we don't know. How do we do that? We use the word buddy, meaning friend for a man, or killa, meaning friend for a woman. Okay? So, literally translated, we have, hey there, friend. Hey there, friend. Now, let's learn how to ask and answer, what's your name? In Ket, we can ask, Ukibila. That is your name what? Actually, it's not really what. It's closer to your name how. Okay? So, one more time. Ukibila. Your name how? If I want to answer, I can say Abidahani. Okay, or any other name for that matter. Here we have a traditional cat name, Dahani, and this is a boy's name. And the, the word probably refers to this awesome ancient myth of a giant eagle that's so big that its wings can block out the sun, which I think is pretty cool. Anyway, Ukibila, Api. Your name here, right? Now, what are we seeing here? Ook, up. Okay, clearly these are what? Pronouns, more specifically, possessive pronouns. So let's move over to our pronouns and take a look here. Okay, so going down the list for subject, Singular pronouns. We're not worrying about plurals right now, okay? For singular pronouns, we have as, meaning I, u, meaning you, and u, meaning she or he, okay? The third person singular pronoun is gender neutral in cats, okay? But what if we want to make these pronouns possessive? What do we do? Ap, meaning my, and really these are more toneless. We don't really extend the tone out very much on these because they're usually not stressed in a sentence. So we have ap, meaning my, uk, your, and bud, meaning his or her, okay? So one more time. Ukibila Abi whatever your name happens to be. So that done, let's move on to our next grammar point. Demonstratives. Okay, demonstratives are important when learning any language, especially if those demonstratives have different forms for word gender and singular plural. Right now, we're not worrying about plural. We'll do plural another time. Instead, we're just going to learn word genders. So just like Spanish, ket has word genders. Different nouns can be masculine, feminine, or neuter, okay? 
and most inanimate objects are going to be neuter, with a few exceptions. For example, trees tend to be masculine, whereas rivers tend to be feminine, okay? But for the most part, inanimate objects are going to be neuter. People, of course, could be masculine or feminine depending on their gender. So, let's look. This in cat. So if I want to say this thing right here, I can say tir for masculine, kire for feminine or neuter. So this is kind of, uh, it, it, it covers two genders here. So it's almost non-masculine if I'm saying kire. But for other words, there is a definite masculine and feminine form. So, so this, kir or kire, that. Now, what's this? We have two that's. What are we doing here? What we're doing here is having a that for something nearby, right? So maybe if I'm pointing over to this computer nearby me, I can say, what's that? That's, that's not too far away from me. If I'm pointing to something that's all the way clear over there, I'm, I'm wanting to use a different form of that. I think, again, Spanish does this too, right? I think we say what? Um, esto, eso, aquel, right? Oh, anyway, sorry, my Spanish isn't so great. So uh, correct me if I'm wrong. So this for nearby, kir, that, again, nearby, tur, that, if that thing we're talking about is far away, car. Now, when we have our ka, ka sound, make sure we're making it in the very back of our mouths that we're making a uvular plosive. So remember, our uvula is, is making a, a stop and releasing air. We're also making a very small uvular trill, okay? So almost a little like the French R sound, r, r, right? It's not as strong in ket. Really, we're making a k sound followed by a very slight trill. So what we want is something like this. Ka, a ga, right? Kar, kar. Okay. If we're doing feminine or neuter, we have kire, ture, kare. So, if we want to ask the question, what is this or what is that, we can make this construction. Remember, this would only be for a neuter, like most inanimate objects, or a feminine noun. Kireakus, kureakus, kareakus. Okay? What do you think akus means? That's right. What? So we can say, kireakus. What's this? Tureakus. What's that? Be, being a thing nearby. Or if that thing is far away, I can say, Kareakus. What's that thing over there? Okay, moving on, let's work on some vocabulary. Now it's time to learn the basic vocabulary that will allow us to introduce ourselves and ask a few simple questions in text. Let's start from here. Bui. Friend. If that friend is a man. If our friend is a woman, we say Kiva. Friend. Female. E. Name. 
Kuus. Remember the ku, ku, right? Kuus is a birch bark teepee. Ka'ap is a birch bark boat, like a small birch bark, almost kind of canoe type thing, right? Hussein, meaning forest. Now, what do we have here? That is a sound that I struggle to produce. But maybe if you are a Korean speaker, you will not struggle. This is almost a back Y sound. It's like a U made while you're smiling. So let's try it. Ooh, ooh, there's our U sound. Now make the same sound while you're smiling. Ooh, ooh, right? Something like this. Puse means forest. Sis means river. Ke'et is person or man. Now, ladies, I'm sorry. Please don't shoot the messenger. That's just how the cat language works. But don't worry. We'll learn how to say woman in our next episode. So ke'et is just a person in general or, more specifically, a man. Ke'et is our word for yes. If we want to say no, we can say burn, which I think is a good word for no, right? So, one more time for yes. Eh -eh. For no. Burn. Now, let's go back to the conversation we had earlier and figure out what we were saying. Okay, now let's go back to our conversation from earlier. Let's look. Buio or kula. Buio ukibila. Ab i da haning ukibila. Ab i tureakus. Kere ab kus. Ture uka ab. Eh. Okay. What are we saying? I think we already have all the language we need to decipher this conversation. Look how good we already are at cat. How amazing. But yo, who remembers what this is? This is hello there, hello friends, right? But yo, or kila, depending on whether we're a man or a woman. So, hello. Buiyo ukibila. Hello, what's your name? Ab i da hanin ukibila. So my name is da hanin. What's yours or what's your name? Ukibila. Ab i your name here. Tureakus. So let's say you're named, I don't know, Stephen. Ab i Stephen. Tureakus, right? So my name, your name here. So one more time. Ab i blah blah blah. Tureakus. Kireakus. So this is my birch bark teepee, right? So this is my birch bark teepee. Today will cop. So what's today? One more time. It's that, right? But not too far away. It's that thing that's kind of nearby me. So today will cop. Let's look at the vocabulary and work out what that means. That's right. Is that your boat? Remember, like a small birch bark boat. And what do you say? You say, eh. -eh. Meaning, yes. So, let's go through one more time. Buiyo, kulaha. Buiyo, ukibila. Abi, dahani, ukibila. Abi, your name here. Tureakus. Tureakus. Tureuka. Eh. So, good job, everybody. 
hopefully by now we're able to ask each other's names, introduce ourselves, and say a few basic things like what's this and what's that in cats. Go onto my blog, professorsoffice.blogspot.com, and I'll have a few exercises that you can do as homework. If you like, you can even send your answers in to me, and I will check them for you. So, see you next time. Everybody take it easy. And in cat, we would say, Kadok Spandinga. So, see you later. Goodbye.